Hey guys, this is Manshock Sub LPs. I'm Sub, this is Crusader Kings 2, and this is Millennia in the Making Episode 44. We're currently playing as King Ulrich the Great of Bavaria, Pomerania, and Bohemia. He's the son of King Ludolf the Great, who himself was the son of King Otto, our initial character, who was actually just a duke at that time. We're currently involved in some wars, so let's just get them underway. The first one is we are allied in the war for Bordeaux as, as a defensive sort of measure to the King of West Francia against the King of Aquitaine. And we're also in the more important war, attacking the German King for Feringen, which is this province up here. He should have the ticking war score there, so... After we're done with this little force here, now this is a revolt, that's fine. We're trying to take out this revolt, because we don't want them to win. <coughs> so, let's see, we will catch them, that's fine. I don't mind catching them. And just, you know, smacking them around a bit, and yeah, we've easily won that. Uh, the King of Lothringia frightened off a maid that we hired to assassinate him with his wailing, but clean escape. Nobody nobody knows. All that sort of business. And yep, there go the rebels. This army here is probably going to try and come down and reoccupy this place down here. But we've got some really quick occupations to do up here in uh, Mainz. Well, we hired another, this guy's the spy master of the king, so, you know, it's good that he's helping us out. Fabulous. <coughs> Excuse me. So yeah, things are going really well here. After we take this province, we'll be able to take the Kingdom of Germany, which may rename itself to the Kingdom of East Francia, I'm not sure. We'll just have to find out. And, uh, yeah, that'll be, that'll be awesome. Now, the reason why we're attacking Mainz, hold up a second, the Chancellor Feringen, Kormasos Arislanid, this guy, has bribed and threatened his way through my domain, trying to get enough people to recognize a claim on my title that he has fabricated for his liege, Count Philip of Feringen. They better not use it, because, well, I'm pretty sure I'm about to become this guy's, like, liege. And I will not be happy. But yeah, the reason why we're attacking Mainz... <sighs> the maid was caught and exposed my involvement. Don't care, it's fine. The reason why we're doing this... The Count... Man, things are going way too fast for me to actually explain. And I'm only on the second uh, speed setting. Uh, the Count is using his claim on... Well, not using it, but he's taken the claim on Weimar. It's alright. It won't be of much use. We do have another faction formed, but it's got 102 men in it, which is nothing. Anyway, as I was saying, the reason why we're attacking Mainz instead of Feringen, despite Feringen providing this guy with a fairly strong ticking war score at this point, is because the rebels basically made this place so easy to besiege. The castle, the Barony of Epstein, Normally has 900 guys in it, it only has 168 in it now, and the faster we get this siege in, the less it'll have when we get to it. This guy's got another maid near the king, you'd think he'd have fired all of his maids and just have, like, well, family members wouldn't help him. The war in Aquitaine is over, we won it. That's fine, I didn't particularly care about that war. Come on. Just tick down so that we can get this place going. There we go. Nice victory there. However, the Duke of Tyrrell has died a natural death. New Chancellor time. Leopold here has 18 points. Let's use him. Now, he's a pretty good Chancellor. I mean, look at this. If we put him somewhere to improve relations, we get an almost 70% chance a year of having the positive event fire. He has an almost 20% chance to fabricate claims, and a 33% or so chance to 
you know, so dissent. We should fabricate claims somewhere. Vovet does cost us money and prestige. Just have a look at my vassal relations. I did increase crown authority, so that could be an issue. Where's the current duck? The current Duke of Tyrrell doesn't actually have the crown authority modifier thing. Let's find someone who does. There may not actually be anybody who cares about me changing the Crown Authority laws in Bavaria because all of the former Dukes have died or been replaced. Anyway, this is the current Duke of Tyrrell. He's alright. Yeah, he, he's not bad at all. That's fine. So, we don't need to send our, vas our Chancellor anywhere inside our realm. <clears throat> to help us with our opinions. Let's have a look at my allies. Hmm. Well, the King of West France here has got a little, little bit of a uh, dishonorable and we called him into war and all that sort of stuff. So let's, let's send him to this guy who should be reigning in Paris. So we just send him there. Nice and easy. And let's continue on with this war. Yeah, so now we have a 12.8 uh, ticking siege meter for an, a an actual castle, which is amazing. Uh, to the most illustrious King Ulrich, the good burghers of Landshut are barely able to pay their taxes. Our coffers are empty. I, ask, I humbly ask that you lower the taxes for your cities. Okay, that would be would vote on minimal city taxes, which is just, it's not, that's not happening. So we could either pay him 74 gold and he'll be fine and we can do that because we have a high stewardship. We don't have a high enough diplomacy to just flatter him, which is the easiest way of dealing with this. So we could pay him 74, 75 gold and he'd get that. He already has a fair amount, but he might use it to, you know, continue developing his place. So it's this this place here. Yeah, you know, giving him enough giving him a bit of gold might be good because the only upgrade he has available to him he can't currently afford. So that's that's something we could do. Or we could say no lol piss off. And our mayors would dislike us for five years. Just give him some money. And we killed the King of Italy. She wasn't even caught. So now you see here, Lotharingia is the de jure kingdoms of Lotharingia and Burgundy. And Italy is all by itself. However, bizarrely, this is Lotharingia down here. Which is what we were actually aiming for. This is what we wanted to be part of Italy. That is irritating as shit. I don't know why that's happened. Look at Rick. Hmm. And these guys have a very strange... Well, again, if Eva Queen dies... Well, I say that. If the Queen of Lotharingia dies, the Queen of Italy gets both titles. If the Queen of Italy dies, her daughter, Princess Frenild, gets the titles. And then the other one. I don't particularly want to kill either of them, but this one has a dead husband. So let's see what we can do. How old is she? 26. Yeah, she won't go with that. If we, wanted, if we went matrilineal, she would, but we're not going matrilineal. So he's he's the only Ludolf finger, Carloman here, is the only Ludolf finger on off, offer. And she has a twenty three opinion of us. What's her sister think? Thirty three, probably not enough. And if we were to try and murder her husband, which we can't even do, I mean he, he's the spy master, but he's not a very good spy master. But we still just don't have, we don't have the numbers. 
So we're just going to let that go for a bit. You know, we've split those kingdoms up. It's good fun. And after we take the, uh, you know, du jour kingdom of Germany, well, the Italians own this little part of it in Schwaben, and we could quite easily take it off them. So, the Germans are besieging Furstenberg here, but they're progressing at 3.6 per 12 days, whereas we're blowing through this place, you know, almost four times that. Yep, people are throwing around their stuff. There was a plot in there that I just want to check out. I think it was this one. She is trying to kill her. Ladies, ladies, there is no need to fight. This one is trying to kill him. Nah, don't don't particularly. He is a good vassal, actually. Oh, yeah, it's unlikely the plot will get up. She does have a little bit of it. You know what? We're just going to tell her to end that plot. I don't particularly want people upsetting the establishment. Unless, you know, it's me. Mm, these weak claims have not changed. So, yeah, we really just... It's not really a holding pattern because we're at war. But, you know. That's what we're doing. My wife has retired to the convent for a short while to gather her thoughts and find some peace. Maybe even God. Perfect occasion to spend time with my lover. Which is 25% chance of King Ulrich getting the lustful trait, which we already have. And a 50% chance of losing 10 piety and Gwella becoming pregnant. Be discreet about spending time with my lover. Which is a 25% chance of becoming deceitful, which we don't have. And is plus 3 intrigue, minus 2 diplomacy. We could really use that intrigue. And then there's the 20% chance of the woman becoming pregnant. Only see my lover on friendship terms, which is 25% chance no effect, 25% chance craven, so that's not good. Or a 25% chance that we lose her as a lover. Or... Spend the time working instead, which is we lose her as a lover. Let's try that one. Well, she hasn't gotten pregnant. So I think we just had two no events there. Alright, that's cool. Deceitful would have been nice. Oh. The Manchian Faith Triumphant. The adherents of the Zoroastrian Faith have steadily dwindled to the point where Manchian believers are in the majority. This new state of affairs has reduced the Zoroastrian faith to a de facto heresy. All former Zoroastrian holy orders are now Manchian. Manichian. The bickering of fools does not concern me. So, let's have a look at that. Yeah, see all of these Manchian lands? These Manchi Manichian is technically a Zoroastrian heresy. Because it's become dominant, it's now the main... Like the primary branch of Zoroastrianism, which is an ancient Persian uh, religion, I believe. It looks like they're being completely dominated by the uh, Sunni, though, which is pretty much how it happens in real life, I think. I mean, I had never heard of Zoroastrianism before I started playing this game, though it is apparently still a thing. Tuberculosis is spreading around this place really fast. I mean... It does that. It's essentially a plague in these times. Ugh, I don't like it being through my realm. Just have a quick look. It's easier to see it on the religion map because of the color difference. But yeah, it's in Nassau. It's all up here on the coast. It's probably something that those damn Norwegians brought with them. Yeah. Okay, so it looks like we did get her pregnant. Yep, oh no, this, was, this is with this intrude, my other lover. A son was born to King Ulrich the Great in this intrude, named Wolfgang. It seems my amorous adventures have, resulting, have resulted in a child. Little Wolfgang is my spitting image. 
Okay, so Wolfgang here is ill and a bastard. So we can legitimize him where he becomes, instead of Lowborn, a member of House Littlefinger. And all of our sons and our wife, I believe, no, just our sons become pissed with us. Acknowledge him as mine, which is we acknowledge him as my son and we may be able to legitimize him later. And isn't true he will be happy with that. Or denounce it. Whereas the child remains who he is. Now this this is an interesting thing, because depending where you are in the game, it sort of dictates which choice you're going to make. If you don't have much in the way of children, you legitimize. Because it's the way of carrying on your dynasty. If you're unsure about how your children are going to go, or if you're quite young, you can acknowledge him as mine, so that later on you can legitimize him. But we're going to denounce him. Because, well... Don't care. And the tiny amount, the minus 20 we get for denouncing him with Isintrude, isn't enough to modify her opinion of me. And, yeah, he doesn't care. He's too young to care. But he is the of Von Oberbeyen because he is a noble, technically. So we've kind of created a new noble family there with quite a nice little crest. I mean, look at that. It's a nice green, lime green, with a dead tree on the back of it. Yeah, there we go. It's quite nice. Better than uh, some I could name. Alright, let's get this going. Okay, we took Epstein. It's wonderful. And now we're going to have a very quick siege of Frankfurt before we come down and beat up some Germans. Yeah, and even though we're occupying those places, we're only just keeping in, in peace with the ticking war score. But that's alright. Once we come down here and beat up this army, we'll come right back up here to Thuringian. And I've just noticed that now we have consumption in here. It's not putting us above the supply limit, though the supply limit is quite reduced. I believe it was 20,000 earlier, and now it's only 13.5. We could exceed it if we'd raised all of our armies, but we don't need to. <coughs> the Germans are not that big a threat. Which is something the French probably should have thought about saying, you know, in the early 20th century. Whoops. Okay, we'll actually get gold out of this one. Though we are, we are still getting gold because we're waging war with retinues. Which is wonderful. Oh, it looks like tuberculosis has passed on a little bit. Yeah, now it's only up here. Yeah, it passed. Wonderful. Down here in Fowls, though. Hmm. How's the rebellion going? The King of Germany is winning it. That's good. We want the King of Germany to win it. But not at the expense of our war, of course. And victory. Thank you. Yeah, almost 20 gold. So now we head down here, beating up rebels on the way. Oh, excuse me. Beating up rebels on the way. Oh. We no longer have to. To the magnificent Count Ulrich, your wisdom and mercy are legendary. We surrender under these terms. He loses 100 prestige. And we get Thuringian. Or more correctly, Duke Johann of Brunswick gets Thuringian. Done. Done. Now. We can't usurp this because one, he's at war. Two, it's actually the title which the war is about. So what we're going to do is come here and say, Hey, buddy, we want to be in your war. And we'll, we'll probably win this for him. Like, no joke. We will probably just straight up win this for him. Yep. Easy. So now we're allied with the guy we were just fighting. No biggie. We get a tiny amount of war score change there. Do we get prestige from it? I think some of our guys get prestige from it. And yeah, now we just sit on these places. They're quite significant in terms of manpower. So, you know. Oh, 
it's fine. I don't care about that particular um, that particular inheritance issue. The Polish are really going for it over here. Nice. Yes, yeah, so while these are fairly strong castles, I can just park my guys outside of them. It doesn't cost me n any money, really. And it's good. We want to keep about, I think, 300 gold on hand because that's probably... 200 to 300 is probably what it's going to cost us to take that title of the Kingdom of Germany. And once we do that, oh, it's on for young and old. There is an Italian revolt, but it's tiny. It's the Genoans, basically. Hmm... We're doing quite well. I know I say that a lot, but we are actually doing really well here. I would very much like to change my investiture laws to free investiture. I could do it in Pomerania and Bohemia. Hmm. Maybe I should do it in Bohemia. Just as like a little bit of... Yeah. Maybe I should. I really want to take the rest of Frisia at some point. I mean, I only own this tiny little bit of it, but I'd like to stop it being integrated into Bavaria. The main thing we want to integrate will be empire titles. Or, you know, kingdom titles into empires, not ducal titles into different kingdoms because if you see here if we integrated uh what's this brunswick into bavaria bavaria would be like in two different places and not connected and the same thing with this this county of galraire and the reason why they're being integrated into bavaria instead of say bohemia or pomerania is because that's my primary title if it came down to it and these places did get integrated, I'd probably try and destroy the titles of Bohemia, which would piss off everybody in it. But just so that it could get integrated into Bavaria, so Bavaria would be quite large, sort of thing. And we might do the same with Pomerania, and eventually Germany. But having more kingdom titles gives you more prestige. A lot more prestige. So we don't really want to do that. So... I think Frisia might be our next target. It does open us up to a lot more Viking raids though because we have more coastline. Other than that, Poland and Hungary. We don't have to worry too much about Italy at this stage, though we do have quite significant plans for Italy involving the Pope. There's a little fight down there. Not very interested in it, you know, let them beat up each other. Yeah, and we have the ticking war score on our side because we, well, the King, King Hilori controls Germany, and that's who, whose side we're fighting on. And he's just defeated that army. The war score jumped up a bit. Now, we did increase castle infrastructure in Weimar, but... I am seriously going to get rid of that place at some point. I don't like the Saxon lands. They're just underdeveloped. And yes, you can say they're underdeveloped because we haven't been developing them. You know, a bit of a catch-22 sort of thing. But whatever. My nephew died comatose in bed from having syphilis and being incapable. That's alright. That was the one who was married to our lover. One of our lovers. What, I'm a king? Deal with it sort of thing. Yep, siege is coming along quite nicely. This guy could probably be heading up to Mainz, though he can't even progress that siege, so he's kind of just wandering around right now as he can't raise up any more troops, as both of his provinces are occupied. Even though this one isn't progressing the siege, 
they're still just sitting on it. Uh, my mission to Paris has been a success. This guy is going to like us a lot more. That's good. So let's have a look at our ally list. Yeah, excellent. We're not going to worry about getting those guys up further. It, it's not important. They're already close enough. So, what could we do with our Chancellor? Well, I'm kind of interested in taking land off the Norse through non-Holy War means. Simply because if we declare a Holy War on the Norse, we get a lot of angry Vikings showing up on our doorstep. So, what we're going to do is fabricate some claims on some Norse lands, in particular Holstein here in Denmark. I think that would be good for us. If a Holstein would lie back, if we do it on Holstein, then we get a. We probably already have a Holy War cast spell eye against these guys here, but let's just check on that. No, we don't actually have a cast spell eye on Zealand because we're not next door to it. So we're going to send our guy to fabricate a claim on Holston, which will, when we take it, be renamed to Holstein. I know that one. We've won this siege in a moment. We've got a peasant revolt. Marek. And they've risen up in Rana. That's kind of annoying because Rana is across a bunch of straits. It's a very hard province to attack. But he might move out of it. I don't know. It could almost stand up to that siege, but just not quite. It's alright. We'll win this war down here and get it done with because we get money out of this as well, of course. Hmm. Yeah, you know what, I'm just gonna raise my personal levies and we're gonna go up there and beat up some guys. And of course, I will not be leading. It is going to be a difficult battle, even though we outnumber them three, over three to one, just because it's across, it's not a river, see. It's an actual straight crossing. When we get a significant combat penalty for it. What we might try and do is give the AI a little bit of a uh, consternation and try and make them move out. That may not happen. Fortunately, the raiders or the defenders of Rugard have just raided the rebels and killed off like a hundred of them. Good job. Good job. We could usurp the Duchy of Thuringia from the German here, but, well, really, we've got better things to usurp from this guy. Oh, he also appears to have become a homosexual in his uh, pastime. Can we arrange a marriage with him? Nope. Oh, that's right, it would be a betrothal, wouldn't it? Because he's still underage. And let's see, my good daughter. Nope, too high, oh, of course he's too high in the line of succession. He's a goddamn king. I thought maybe because, you know, he's gay that he wouldn't care too much about who he marries, but, or how he marries them. Killed another hundred of the besiegers. The uh, defenders of Rugard are quite exceptional. The steward of Chelly is trying to kill the Count of Rana. Stop that. Alright. So we are going to want some competent commanders just to try and alleviate that penalty for crossing the strait. <clears throat> Excuse me. Come on, this is the main force here. They're the dudes from uh, Oberbayern. And they are exceptional. 
I can't believe we get almost 3,500 guys from one province. Alright. <laughs> well, this guy's a flanker, so we don't want him there, but we'll put the Count of Nassau in control of there. This guy in control of... I can tell that he was a flanker, because it just, like, it showed up. Like, when we clicked here, you can see right there. Even though it's partially hidden, I know what the symbols mean. And that should be fine. Let's go. No, they're not moving. We do have a marriage offer between this guy and my daughter. This guy is heir to the Prince Bishopric of Egan. Let's see if they'll take a matrilineal. They probably won't. They will. They'll take a matrilineal. Well then... So these are two marriages to the same guy. With the same girl. But this one is the one that we want. One, it gives us 17 prestige, which is nothing. It also gives us an alliance with the King of Aquitaine, which is always good. And two, well three, it's matrilineal. This one does exactly everything here, except it's not matrilineal. So we send that offer. And I'm not too sure who has to... Let's wait for him to come back with a response before we decline this. Because declining it might give him a bit of an opinion penalty. Which I didn't quite check the exactitudes of things. There we go. Yep, so he has arrived at my court. Wonderful. So, the Prince Bishopric... Of some place. I don't even remember. I could find it out quite easily. The Prince Bishopric of Egan. This place, right here. It's not huge, but more importantly, it gives us an alliance of Aquitaine. And Aquitaine now like us quite a bit because of marriage ties. So we have alliances with two kings and an emperor. Woe betide whoever fucks with us. Alright, so the penalties for attacking a straight are right there. You can see them all. They're huge. But we're winning. On numbers. Pretty much. And a little bit of military command. Yep, there we go. They will probably flee. We've won the defensive siege. Yep, all good. And they're fleeing. So we do want to chase them to Rostock. And we'll get there at the same time as him, so who knows who the defender will be. Now, he won't, the peasant peasant guy won't accept an enforced demands, but he will accept an offer peace. The difference is 10 prestige. I'll be more than happy to just hold out to get that extra 10 prestige, even though it's almost nothing. And we really don't have to worry about the straight crossing, because, well, we're attacking a routed force. Who are all dead. Put down the army... Tell the guy that he's lost. Done. Yeah, he has no gold, so banishing him has no point. Executing him costs us piety, and we don't want to release him. And he also hates us so much. Now what you can do sometimes is, if he actually takes... Like if he successfully besieges a holding, he gets a bit of gold, because you get a bit of gold from a successful siege. And then when you get him back, you can banish him to get the gold back. It's kind of a retarded way of redistributing gold amongst your dudes. Because that gold does come from somewhere. In this case, it would have come from the Chief of Rana, so we would have gotten a little bit of this money. Kind of pointless, to be quite honest. I mean, if you need that much, and also that peasant leader just died in dungeon, I guess he offed himself or something. Yeah, if, if you do it like that, it just doesn't... It seems pointless. It's 10 gold. We have additionally gotten some weak claims that we could press that have just turned up. We could press a weak claim for Lofringia for my son-in-law, Behemond Gellens. 
Who is, I'll remind you, the guy that we just matrilineally married to our daughter? We have the same on Burgundy. And uh, Franconia as well, but we can't declare war on the king of Germany who has some of the worst hair I've ever seen. We can't declare war on him yet because we're in a truce. We might declare war on the Lofringinian queen. She does have the king of West Francia as an ally, but he likes us a lot more. I'm kind of surprised that she doesn't have... Oh, right. <laughs> Something happened in Italy, and it is now ruled over by the Deheismes, 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 instead of the Carlings. So, after we do what we're doing here, we're probably going to press over here our little weak claims. Well, that one guy's weak claims. And we're going to hope that he doesn't lose the damn kingdom like our wife did down here in uh, Galicia. Alright, it's game time. We've just won the German revolt. Let's make sure that we've got a dude on the flank there. Wonderful. So now, what we do is we come here to this guy. Go to the Kingdom of Germany. We could usurp it because we control 52%. That would give us 100 prestige and cost us 200 gold. Done. We're now King of Germany. It is, however... Oh, wow. It has high crown authority? <laughs> oh, that, that's exceptional. Okay, we're going to change the succession law in Germany. Uh, I'm not too sure why we could do this immediately, considering we just took the place, but we're going to institute primogeniture succession in Germany. Done. Now, this does mean that our heir to everything will take Germany as well. But... It's also a way of saying, hey, if the elective succession in other places don't work out, you've still got a place. And I think our heir will like us for it. Oh, he's pleased by the succession law change. But, now we have some very interesting things to do. You'll see here that these duchies are no longer part of any united realm. The only one there is Brittany, and that's, you know, well, it's the duchy of... Brittany, but it's actually the county of Furstenberg, and that's because the uh, former king of Germany, who now hates us so much, has it. We should also usurp that title from him, but I'm not particularly caring. Now, we still can't form the Holy Roman Empire because we don't have an adequate realm size. We need 26 more, t more land, basically. So what we're going to do is come up here and say, Hey, buddy, we are your du jour liege. You should be our vassal. And we're going to come down here to Franconia and say, Hey, buddy, we are your du jour liege. You should be our vassal. And we're going to do the same with uh, Duke Adolf here. Yep. I didn't think we'd be able to do it with all of them because of the small difference in rank modifier which is because we're a king and they're only one step below us as a duke, they may say, oh, well, you know, not really. We're doing kind of cool. Okay, now we're at 201 because these guys joined in. These guys joined in. We're at 210. I don't think we're going to get there, though. Come on, dude. There we go. 217. We can press a du jour ducal claim on Clev up here against the Lotharingians. We could also press, I believe. Yes, we have a du jour claim on Schwaben here. Hmm. I wonder, do we have a press all claims button against the Lotharingian? No. Sometimes you get a press all claims, but I think that's for personal claims only, not for du jour claims and claims that other dudes have. So who's she at war with? Oh, the Italian for Princess Agnes's claim on Burgundy. 
Well, that's cool. Because I'm going to be claiming Lotharingia off you. For some other guy. But before we do that, let's be sensible. And check the size of their armies. So this is us. We're third. We have almost 20,000 troops. Lo Italy has almost 10,000. Lotharingia has 7 thousand seven hundred yep I know we just got out of a war and we still have about 15 minutes before the end of the episode we could either claim Burgundy or Lothringia for the same guy I think yep this guy and just checking he is matrilineally married to Princess Elizabeth he does have one heir but if Princess Elizabeth here gives him a son that won't matter. And we can always try and off this one anyway, if it becomes problematic. So. Enough pussyfooting around. We've got a war to uh, deal with. And we are going to call in the West Francian. And we are additionally going to call in the guy in Aquitaine. We're not going to call him the Byzantine because we don't need him and we're saving him for, for other stuff. But, hmm. Well, we can't just really, we really shouldn't just fight this with our retinue. So I'm going to raise personal levies again. Put them all down there. Just tell our retinue to stop moving. It Tell our retinue to stop moving, not a province. And see with this guy <laughs> yeah see this guy hates us so much that he will not accept that uh, vassalization offer if we offed him and this guy liked us because he's the heir he might come in and then we'd probably get lands over here in Brittany for reasons but you know whatever so we're actually going to wander around with two armies today, just to try and speed things up a little bit, instead of just blobbing everything into a massive 10,000 strong army. Yes, West Francian has joined in, and also because we're getting backup. Massive backup. I would like to, and Aquitaine joined in as well, I would like to stop myself from leading the forces over there. Okay. Yeah, so two armies of about 5,000 men. This guy's been accused of being a heretic. He is an immediate vassal of me, so... Mm. But he did have a plus 100 opinion of me, so we're going to say, yeah, I'm sure he is a heretic. And he won't care too much. Oh, he does care a bit. Not, not much, though. It might change his, you know, who he's paying money to, but it didn't, actually. We're still just ahead of the Pope. The Pope still doesn't like us. Let's try buying an indulgence for my sins. So that cost, will cost us about maybe 150, maybe 50. We'll have to see. That's a fairly sizable army there in Lotharingia, so when our armies stack up, we might try and take it on, because it is fairly big. So if we stack up, take it on, and then split our armies up to besiege various places. Either that, or we let them go and, you know, attack Italy. As they're attacking Italy, they are making Italy weaker. And I don't know if we've got any reasons for war against the Italian. We can't even check those. Uh, the Holy Father has granted us absolution, so glory to God, which is we lose 190 gold, we get 25 piety, and his opinion of us changes by 10 for 5 years. Or we say, you know, that's really too much. Which for 5 years gives us a minus 10. It's only 10 points, and it doesn't knock us up into the positive range, and it is a hideous amount of money, so fuck you. He's going to die at some point anyway, he's a pope, they don't last very long. 
This one is trying to kill Constance Aberfrau, the heir to Gelrair. Yeah. Hang on, we just got another one popping up as well. Uh, the mayor. This guy is trying to kill this guy. Stop that, bro. Yeah, we just got 67 gold from our steward, being an awesome fellow. It usually orders the dudes that you can select from with your army from the highest martial score to the lowest, you know, naturally, which is great because it helps out a lot. He must have moved his army into Lorraine. That's all right. We'll move our guys into Metz or something. Uh, this guy doesn't like us. And he would like us to release... Count Ernst. No. Absolutely not. Because if we remember right, we might not actually be remembering right here. I thought we had one of these people were being betrothed. Oh well, she can marry Carloman. Nope. Nope, she can't. Uh, one of our sons must have broken that betrothal. You know. Let's see, we did have a, a thing form there, Lower Crown Authority in Bohemia. That's alright. You don't have enough men. A lot of the Dukes in Germany, let's just have a look at those. So, the German Dukes, so Swabia, there's no Duke of Swabia, there is a Duke of Franconia. He doesn't like us. One, he's ambitious. Two, he thinks I'm a tyrant or something. Oh, that's because he just tried to get us to release a guy and we didn't. Short reign. High Crown Authority, and he wants the German title. The Duke of Thuringia isn't actually under our auspices. And the Archbishop of Gelrair, of, well, the Prince Archbishop of Cologne, or Cologne, I believe it is in modern terms, he likes us, he's fine. And the Duke of Baden, eh, you know, he doesn't hate us. So that's pretty good. It's only the Duke of Franconia who is an issue, and that's because he is ambitious. His son is content, though. Wait. It's not his son, it's his brother. We're probably going to have to deal with Duke Eberhard III here for quite some time, because he's only 13, and I don't particularly want to start assassinating guys in my realm. Particularly when if we get found out, then the next one will also hate us despite being content. So we're just going to try and... Well, we're going to hope that natural, the natural order of things just deals with him. We can deal with a couple of dukes that don't like us. It's not a big deal. We're not going to finish this war by the end of the episode, I, I can promise you that. This is going to be a fairly sizable war. But I don't foresee any real problems with it, because the Lotharingian is moving down to engage um, the Italians. So we're just going to siege some places, nice and quick. You two need to have a child... ASAP. A male child. Another thing this will do is continue to break the carling hold. It'll actually eventually become that the only carling left will be West Francia, our ally, who we will eventually turn on and betray. What? They're carlings. They aren't normal people. 50 tech points. I don't really... I guess having it in a military would be nice because then I would up my heavy infantry. Because that's not progressing at all. Even with our wonderful Maid of Olomouc as our Marshal. But I, I would take 
more economy, I don't need culture. So let's say military. It went into culture, didn't it? Fucking hell. Nothing I'm interested in raising. At all. Okay, so yeah, we got our two sieges underway here. They'll be relatively slow, but they'll be constant. And the king of West Francia is moving in to help us out with one of them, it seems. Yeah, a little bit. Okay, this is a bit of a worry. The Lotharingian army is coming back up. We don't have 5,000 guys here. We have 11,000 guys here because of the uh, king of West Francia. So, let's see what the Lotharingian does. Sits in Lorraine, apparently. Move, tries to move to Nordgau. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. We've got another faction form down here. Uh, the Duke of Franconia is forming a faction to say, this guy should be German king. No, no, I, I can't really... I don't really believe that he should. So where's this guy going to go? Up into Fowls. Okay, yeah, so he's trying to attack up there. We're going to have to move our army. Can we engage? 31st of December, 5th of... We could, but I don't think the West Francian is going to follow us. So instead, we're just going to move into Fowls. We will get there first. So he should stop his movement. And that was intentional. So we stop our movement. And if he goes again... Okay, now he's moving down into Sun Gao. That's fine. We'll just watch him make his move. We are losing some money, as we usually do when we have our levies raised. It's alright. Yeah, okay, so they're going to beat up some French guys. That's fine. And then they're going to go on over to Bourgogne. Bourgogne? That place. I'm usually fairly alright with pronouncing French names. It's the Eastern European ones that, you know, get me. He lies. Yeah, so they're headed down to Chalon and then to do whatever, I guess. Maybe they're coming down to take out the Aquitaine King. It's alright. We are technically losing because of some battles, but, you know... Battles don't always win the war. And he's changed his mind and now he's heading back to Nordgau. That's fine. What we might do is... See how long he takes and try and see if we can land into the county, into Fowls, a day after he turns up. And see if he's going to say, oh, I don't want to deal with that. Or something like that. Duke Adolf of Baden is trying to fabricate a claim on the Kingdom of Germany. Duke Adolf doesn't particularly like us. It's only 57% chance of imprisoning him. Let's do it. Done. Get owned, bitch. Okay, 19 February, and again, moving into Fowls on the 8th. So let's just check that. 3rd of March. Oh, we're actually moving everybody. Let's go uh, attack some Europeans in the... I don't actually know whether you could call these guys Germans, or let's have a look. Uh, it's kind of a mix. It's kind of Franks and Germans, isn't it? Let's just call them Alsatians and Lorrainians and just be done with it. We have found this woman. She is lowborn. They will not ransom her. She's kind of an idiot. Let's just keep her imprisoned. Because this siege succeeded. Yeah, so we're going to meet these guys before they get to Fowl, so that's fine. And we're going to beat them up in the forests of Nordgau. Alright, let's look at this. Apparently, the West Francian has managed to get his guys to lead the flanks, which isn't great. But we're equal, we're equal, then we lose out on that flank. But this flank has more numbers, this flank has more numbers, this flank is practically equal. So, as expected, despite the river crossing, which I didn't even notice, where is the river crossing between Metz 
and Nordgau. Seriously, where is it? I don't even see a river. Fucking hell. We should still win it. And if it looks like we're losing, then we just move these guys down. And hopefully they get there in time. But yeah, it, it looks good for us. That center flank, despite them having the narrow thing going on, which I don't quite understand. It's a fairly recent change. Yeah, there we go. Center flank folded. All the flanks are folding. Everything's done. We've won that. That should be a sizable amount of war score. 52%. A lot of prestige, a lot of military tech. That being said, three points of military tech is practically worthless. They're going to flee into fouls where they will be caught. And we are actually going to just... It says that we've got sieges here, and we do, because while this province is technically owned by Italy, the Princess Agnes of Italy, in fact, these two, the city of Lauterburg and the Bishopric of Strasbourg, are owned by the Lotharingian. Lotharingian. And they're incredibly weak because, you know, city. They have taken a river crossing this time. We won't be pursuing these guys, but I think we'll wipe them out. Yeah, we wipe them out. And we imprisoned this guy. He's just a mare, so let's let's ransom him for 25 gold. And we're actually going to call that the episode, I believe. It's getting a bit on onto that sort of time. So yeah, if you've got any questions, as usual, leave them below. I'd be happy to respond to them for you. Whether they're about what I'm doing, what my plans for the future are, whatever. And if you've got any comments along the same veins, you know, leave them below. If you liked the video, give it a like. If you'd like to see more of this sort of thing, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And yeah, I've been Sob. You've been yourselves. Later.